Hey everybody and welcome to a gangsta wild ride with Steve-O. It doesn't get much more G'd up than Young Buck, baby. And if you're thinking, wow, this is weird, Young Buck and Steve-O, get ready to find out that we've got a history, a real one. And man, is it a hoot. Plus, for a guy who's filed for bankruptcy twice, who's been just dragged through the worst of reputational harm, who's been to prison and just like all of this stuff, for him to sit down with me and be as candid, as, as humble, as honest, like, I mean, dude, really, really epic. Really, really epic, and I really respect Young Buck. Also, uh, man, I just, I'm a fan. Like, I'm a real fan of his rap, dude. So uh, this one gets very, very, very gangster. So let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, people of the universe, I bring to you Young Buck. Welcome to Cash Veal. You did? Yes. Yeah, you dude. did. <laughs> so uh, I, I just moved to Tennessee. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got myself. Uh, so you live down the street? You? Not. Uh, I mean, it's pretty far down the street. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm way up north, like closer to Kentucky. Oh, okay, though. But you a part of the Tennessee tribe now, yeah. so it's like you did. Like you're here now. Yeah. You're us. Yeah. Okay. So, 2005, G Unit tour. Fifty was uh, touring behind. Uh, his uh, second album. Yeah. Uh, M was it, was, it was, it was, what was the name of that tour? Up and Smoke uh, Tour. The, uh, uh, Up and Smoke. Up and Smoke Tour, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so they're, uh, they're filming a Tony Yayo music video in LA, and I just show up on the set. I'll never forget it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I show up on I the set. I mean it. That, that, then, uh, then, then I go with Who Kid to, to his hotel, and like, and, and Who Kid's like, okay, the bus is coming, the G Unit tour bus is coming, and I was just like, all right, I'm on it, and so I get on the bus and, and we roll out to Vegas. Yep, yep. When you came down those stairs in the damn cart. Yeah, that was in Vegas. <laughs> that's right. But on the on the bus on the way to Vegas, yeah, right, the, the the bus driver is like very very serious. There will be no cigarette smoking on the yeah, bus. Yeah, I remember that too. Yeah, and 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 so I'm like, I, I opened up a window, and I'm like <laughs> hanging out of the window, smoking a cigarette. Out the back of the bus. <laughs> and the bus driver is losing his mind. He's so pissed. And he's like, I said, no, no smoking on the bus. And I said, I was halfway out the window. <laughs> and the bus driver says, you think I need a white boy hanging out my window on a rap tour? <laughs> and this was like during your worst behavior years. Oh, yeah. yeah I yeah, mean yeah. it, bro. Like those years right there, bro, was like the crazy, crazy Steve-O. Like the man, listen, bro. It, hey, man, all I can say, bro, those are some years of my life, too. Outside of your crazy years, this, this was my crazy years too. Uh, you did, yeah. yeah, for real, for man. sure. So after, and, I, and I'm all messed up. I'm all drunk. And then after <laughs> the hanging out the window thing, then I end up uh, before we get to Vegas, I'm passed out on the floor of the bus. Yep. And I heard some. I heard a couple things about while I was passed out. Yeah. Like you had a big bottle of mustard. Yeah. And you I were did. Squeezing, it, squeezing in my it, mouth. it in your mouth, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, this is the shit that he would do to a motherfucker. Let me, get my, let me, let me do this to him. You feel me? Right. But shit, Steve-O probably just drunk that shit yeah. like it was nothing, bro. That, that's, that's, what, that's what they told me. <laughs> they, said that, uh, they said that you filled my mouth with mustard. I'm sleeping, and, and in my sleep, I like go, huh? and I like throw the horns and swallow and the mustard. swallow the mustard, bro. I was like, oh yeah, this motherfucker right here is just too crazy, bro. Like, I can't, I can't come up with nothing. I thought I was getting my my moment. 
Hey, shit, man. You just have the bed like, oh, yeah, that ain't nothing. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I needed that. Yeah. yeah, and then they, they, said, they, they said after that, they were like, all right, we're just not even going to mess with him. Yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, and then somebody was like, I had a Rolex on my wrist, and like someone was trying to like take man, my Rolex. Or I don't something. know, man. Think... We had so many. It's good that you was able to keep it because back then, bro, we had <laughs> <laughs> we had the sharks on the bus. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I, I think it was you who who prevented somebody from stealing. Believe that, life. man. I was like, man, y'all better not, y'all better not, you know, touch him in any kind of way because you was lit and you yeah. was really lit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I think a lot of dudes was getting upset. Just because the bus driver was still making up such a, 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 a uproar about you know the wild shit that you was yeah. doing and just wild shit, and I was like, man, listen, bro, everybody know Steve O, know how he is. Motherfucker ain't gonna fuck with him. Excuse my language, you did, yeah. but I meant it, you know. So you always just been a genuine, solid dude. Well, thanks, man. Now, now I got a question for you. Sure. What made you go up those stairs? <laughs> In a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a grocery cart, right? It was a bellhop cart. Yeah, a bellhop cart. The luggage, cart, the luggage cart. I just had that, dude. I had it. In, it was an idea. That every time I looked at a, a bellhop cart, because Bam, my buddy Bam, he had the thing where you get in the shopping cart. And and I was. And you like, said the bill. It was a bill cart. Yeah, yeah. There, there it is. And, uh, and. <laughs> You know, and so I was just like, man, throw me downstairs in a bellhop cart. And I got 50 to do it. And that was like, I mean, it was one of the coolest things. That shit was so crazy. I was like, yo, bro, you're going to fuck around and kill yourself, bro. Yeah, I mean, dude, that. You that, didn't really give a shit about it. We did it three times in a row. I mean it. I was right there every time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, at this time, were you, at the, were you on the celebrity death pool? Like, uh, was that going on, too? I mean, like, the, the celebrity death pool was a thing, and I was, uh, I, I cost a lot of people a lot of money by not dying. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, dude, and then it, it, was, it was something really, um, that it meant, meant a lot to me, and it was just a, a, a wonderful memory. At the show on the Up and Smoke tour in Vegas, you brought me out during yes, the sir. smoke break. Yes, sir. The smoke and they break. went crazy. Set, you know, like, come on out, and like, I'm just smoking blunts with the G unit on stage in this arena, and like, yeah. I was just so, I was yeah. so happy. And at the time, at the time, it was uh, like a hardcore felony to smoke weed in, in Nevada, they had yep. the most no tolerance. Mm -hmm. Yep, it was like, uh, it, it, and and it, that everybody on stage is. Blazing. Just blazing, bro. It was like once we started, it was like everybody in the crowd, the whole arena started. You look up, it was just like a cloud of smoke, like you was just in a in a in a damn bonfire or mm -hmm. something. You know what I'm saying? So it was one of the moments where every show that we used to do then, doing the smoke break, if it was any kind of different celebrities that would come see our show or whatever, that was my moment to kind of bring them out on the stage. You know what I mean? And not every Celebrity would come out and smoke. <laughs> like I brought LeBron out in Ohio, yeah. and he it wasn't smoke. like he smoked. So in Vegas, for it to be a zero tolerance state, like at that time, it was really, really, really big. And the whole time I was thinking when we was getting off the stage, man, they finna lock my ass up for this shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But it it, it it went by smooth. We made history. You yeah. know, I'm one that can say I've been on the stage, bro, in front of thousands of people with Steve-O <laughs> smoking a damn blunt <laughs> where we wasn't supposed to smoke at. You did? Yeah. Yeah, man. Man, and to, dude, as, as a fan, man, like, I just, I loved it, man. Yeah, man. I got I got uh, introduced to Who Kid in 2004, yeah. about, about a year before that. And, like, man, I, I, I get in the studio with him. I'm like... Who who are we beefing with? You know who are we beefing with? And like they're just throwing me names, and I'm just like, oh yeah, well that dude's a yeah, this, yeah, that yeah, guy's yeah, a yeah, yeah. I remember and just threatening people and insulting people. He was, was a three? real G unit soldier, bro. <laughs> he did for real, like 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 Steve O just took our beef in. Like okay, bro, G unit over here. Oh y'all got a problem with him? Fuck yeah. you. Too. <laughs> you know? Was this during your rapping? Days? Uh, it, 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 it's it spawned my rapping days. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah, like I I, had not, I didn't know anything about it. I was just in there and I was just like, they're like, they're like, yeah, we, we got a problem. 
Yeah, when we had a lot Buck, of Buck, did you ever hear any of his rap albums? I or didn't, his I songs? Didn't, I didn't die. That's why I was about to say, hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, <I'm> a, <laughs> I was really going to say, yo, bro, you think you got another hot 16 in you? I need to put you on this next take. <laughs> I think he's trying to get back in the game. Bro. Yeah, he's trying to slide back in the game. Yeah. Let's do it, Steve, bro. They're going to so love this album. Man. We're going to name it yeah. The Wild Ride. You did? Yeah. Word. Oh, my God. So, so then... Um, after I get like I, it started occurring to me, uh, like a, a little while after the, after that, like yeah. man, I've I have threatened and insulted, like uh, some scary people, and and I remember I met Dave Chappelle. I said, yo, I said, yo, Dave, man, I think uh, I think my life might actually be in danger. You know, I'm like <laughs> I got I got I've been with the G Unit and like and, and threatening all these people. <clears throat> Dave Chappelle said, no, nah, man. You're Steve-O. You got diplomatic immunity. Whether I have diplomatic immunity is up for debate, but what is not up for debate is the fact that nobody is immune from developing terrible habits. I know a lot of you have terrible habits that you wanna break, and let me tell you how to do that. It's called fume. This is a diffusive device which simply flavors air, meaning there is nothing whatsoever unhealthy about it, and I love it. I'm not even trying to ditch a bad habit. I just enjoy it. I really do, and I always have it in my pocket. If you see me, ask me if it's in my pocket. If it's not, I'll shoot a shout-out video for you and your buddies. And honestly, I've done that for everybody who's asked me even though it was in my pocket, because I love it. And I love you. I want you to be a happy, healthier version of yourself by dropping the bad habit, replacing it with the good habit. So if it's time, then let's do this. You go to tryfume.com. That's T-R-Y-F-U-M dot com slash Stevo for 10% off your journey pack. And it's called the journey pack because this is your journey to a healthier, happier you. Plus, if you do it now, they've got this buy one, get one core deal. The core is the thing in the middle, which flavors the air. My favorite flavor is mint crisp. And the good news is if I wanna buy one, I get one free. Trifume.com slash Stevo and use the promo code Stevo to get 10% off your journey pack. Now, let's get back to it. You do. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> and it's just, I think it's kind of true because, like, there's no street cred yeah. in beefing with, with me at all. Yeah, think. no, like not at all. Know. It's just like, like, why would you? Because obviously, you know, you've entertained people in your wild and crazy ass way. So it was just like, I don't think a lot of individuals at that time, even though we may have real problems with them, would looked at it as if, yo, yeah. oh, he's he, he's a part, he's a G.U. the soldier. We're going to get him when we see him yeah. type shit, you know? So it, it was just one of those times where we just, you know, at the time, 50 had a lot going on and stuff. He had issues with uh, uh, Ja Rule and, you know, back then it was issues with a little sum of everybody, man. Fat Joe and a lot of the individuals that he kind of, you know, have a cool relationship yeah. with at Did a point in time. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> now, was there actually like personal reasons why all that beef with like Ja or Fat Joe was happening, or is it really yeah, just that to like? The... Is it just to like? It okay, was... I'm. I want beef just to get more notoriety, or like. No, no, it was real life. I definitely know the issues that that, that we were going through at the time. None of it was made up uh, for it was the like TV. Irv or... Gotti. Yeah, he like had a the... lot of things that that basically. Uh, a lot of issues that before I even became a part of G-Unit was already there as far as like the Ja Rule situation and uh, a few of them I had already been there, but a lot of those issues was just, uh, you know, one thing 50 used to always say, which is true, is, uh, you know, the rap game is kind of like boxing. Everybody's fighting to be number one. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you, if you, you know, said something out of the way or did anything that he kind of felt like was disrespectful, then you know, you know, we we made it more disrespectful. You know, you mm -hmm. get disrespectful, we get disrespectful. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But we took it to the kind of extreme, like where we didn't uh, we didn't look at it. It was like just for the rap. We looked at it, it as like we live in this. You know, so if we see you, 
it's gonna go up. You know, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna see what what that shit you said is it for real? Cause we gonna we gonna bring it to you that way. So that aura and that time, like I say, the issues were so real that you know when we were wearing them bulletproof vests and things like that, coming out on the stage with all these guys with all these bulletproof vests. You know, those bulletproof vests was real. That, it wasn't a show. You know what I'm saying? It was <laughs> it was individuals that was really, of course, wanting him dead, I think, and, and, and anybody that came along with him. And uh, we lost a few soldiers along the way that was a part of G-Unit in regards to things being so real, you know what I'm saying, that they end up losing their lives and things like that. So it definitely wasn't a, definitely wasn't a made up situation. You know? Is it wearing a bulletproof vest a felony too? I mean, you in know, some places. If you're a convicted it is. felon. Oh yeah. really? Yeah, I definitely couldn't put one on right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it was just one of those situations, man, where uh, even if it was, we didn't care because our lives was at stake. Yeah. We'll rather we'll rather deal with it at that time through through if we had to to deal with it from a law enforcement place. And, and and before we just get out there and, and encounter a situation where we wish we had the vest on, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, man, it was it was one of those trials where in, in my lifetime where I say like, you know, I come from I come from Nashville, Cadsville, I come from the ghetto, I come from nothing, you know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, just having issues with different individuals wasn't never new to me, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just at that level, it was it was different. You know what I'm saying? Because we was beefing with guys that were, you know, financially well off and all <laughs> of that stuff. They got the means to the resources, the resources <laughs> and things like that. So you had to be careful. You know what I'm saying? Man, and so so uh, then I'm interested with this. So all the mixtapes. Yep. Like, help me understand from a financial perspective. Mm -hmm the difference between a mixtape and an album? Well, let me say this. It's a, everybody's method is different when it comes to dropping, say, mixtapes and actually financially gaining from it. You know, you could drop a mixtape and uh, create a situation where you have a contract that's in place with distribution as well and see, and see you know, financially, just like you would an album type of yeah. thing. Or a lot of times, a lot of guys, uh, I mean, mixtape wise, you can hand to hand these things as well. You understand what I'm saying? My career kind of was started with G-Unit by basing it off of my own personal mixtape, but here it is, I'm selling, back then we had CDs. So, you know, uh, at the time it might've cost me $300 to press up a thousand CDs. I'm selling them for $10 a piece. You do the math. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so the financial is different. Now, as far as from an album, of course, you got a budget. You understand? Uh, some of it's recoupable. You dig what I'm saying? And some of it's not. Uh, streaming and all those things that we deal with now wasn't really just big back then. But I do remember uh, Jimmy Iovine having a conversation with 50 years and years before the game is at where it's at now that it was going to become what we're living. So 50 kind of had a head start on things, bro. Like, I mean, he was one of the dudes that was really, really uh, ahead of a lot of other individuals in the game because he was able to capitalize even with G-Unit by, you know, taking us overseas before it became, like, we were one of the first real, real, uh, think, rap groups that, that really- International. Internationally toured and, 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 and you know, he, he would keep us over there as well. And now you look around, you see a lot of lot of artists and stuff, you know, traveling the world. But at those times, the music would drop in the United States. But by the time we would go overseas, it would be brand new. So it was like, okay, here we <clears throat> is, we touring over here. And then we'll go overseas and, and, and tour there. But the music was just now coming out. Mm -hmm. Now you put it out, it hits the world immediately you yeah. know with the streams and the whole internet thing and you know that's 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 one of the things but financially gaining it it's just different ways right that uh because some some <clears throat> individuals uh in the rap game they can possibly make more off a of mixtape than they would an album now you don't know the difference 
You yeah. know what I'm saying? With all of the streaming, because a lot of artists now are just paid out through streaming. Right. You know, or, or yeah. you know, a lot of hard copies is not, it's not really there. Of course, you can get your iTunes sales and things like that, but a lot of people are just streaming records and I don't think it's really fair numbers that artists get from stream, from the streaming platforms at all. But the, the Snoop Dogg just came out and said he had a billion streams and he only made 45,000. Exactly. You which know, is crazy. Which is crazy. And I think, uh, you know, artists uh, in all genres of music should team together and, 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 and fight that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's our art, you know? And uh, I think we should be compensated way more than, uh, like you said, a billion streams, $45,000. It was, it was a point in time where you sell a million records and you see a million dollars. It was that four cents a thousand yeah. downloads. Yeah, it just yeah. depends on the percentage that you had involved in your situation. But now it's just a lot of artists are making the money, I think, from uh, touring, of course. And merch. Stuff, merch and things like that. Like, welcome to Cash. You know what? Make sure y'all click my link and grab you some merch. You know, <laughs> the cash deal <laughs> sure. gear. You did, but yeah, that's that. You're exactly right, bro. When you guys are touring around, like throughout Europe, do you guys hire a professional blunt roller to to go with you guys? Or I you guys am the professional blunt you roller. Did your own? <laughs> you did, but I did, I did have, I did have my guy. Shout out to Dwight. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, I kept, I kept one of my guys with me. That you know what I'm saying? That would always keep it together, but. I still feel like I'm the tightest, you dig? Yeah. Do you pay him per blunt or just a... a Definitely not per blunt, because if that was the case, I would have been fucking broke. You I, 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 but I made sure that he was well taken care of, though. Cool. You know what I'm saying? It was like, uh, if I make money, they make money. My circle was, in, 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 in a sense, it was one of those good and bad things because it got to a point where I slowed down from making money and then the circle started not making money and resorting back to doing crazy shit. And some of my circle is not here now, too. You dig? So yeah. it, it, it was, like I say, man, it was the biggest experience for me because, truthfully, I had already established myself as, an, as, an, as a known artist before I became a part of G-Unit. You know, and then it started out with me uh, uh, just rocking through my cash money days. I, I, I had a... a um, and still do got a real close friend that kind of, you know, brought me around those guys at a very young age. So honestly, I thought my career would would have would have happened through Cash Money, and uh, it, it it didn't, and and end up, you know, meeting Fifty, and Fifty gave me that opportunity to uh to become what what I became to the world, and I'm I'm forever grateful for that. You now know? Cash Money was with Baby and Lil Wayne. Baby correct? and Lil Wayne. Yeah. Yep, yep. I came up with Lil Wayne. Uh, Juvenile, Turk, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Baby, baby was like, always like a father figure to us all. And even now, I still look at him as the big dog. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, he gave me a lot of a lot of opportunity and a lot of game since I was a youngster just by being amongst him. And uh, now, were you touring with Cash Money? Let me tell you what happens when you're on tour. You cover a lot of ground and you put in a lot of work. And the best way to know how much ground you covered and how much work you put in is to wear a Whoop band, the most sophisticated fitness tracking device known to man. It tells me everything about the calories I'm burning, how I'm burning them. It like when I ride a bicycle, it knows. The app is unbelievable. It tells me every stage of sleep I was in, how long I was in each stage, how many calories I burned, how I burned them, how my heart is performing, what's my skin temperature, like how oxygenated is my blood. I mean, like there is just no other fitness tracking device that's going to give you that kind of information. It's called Whoop, baby. And if you're not wearing it, then... You just don't know what's going on with your body. And the way that I'm chopping wood these days, like, I love looking at it. I love going to bed at night knowing that I put in that work. I love waking up knowing that I got that rest. And I want you to know these things too. So go to whoop.com. That's W-H-O-O-P.com. And use the promo code Stevo for 10% off your membership. 
It's big savings, and it's very, very well worth it. Plus, you can put together fun groups with your buddies, and so everybody knows who got the best recovery, who burned the most calories, who got the most strain in. I mean, it's a lot of fun. So one more time, go to whoop.com. That's W-H-O-O-P dot com, and use the promo code Steve for 10% off your membership. Now, let's get back to it. Yeah, I was torn, bro. I never got to a point where I was able to release any any music, but I was a part of uh, the whole era of the beginning of, of uh, the Hot Boys and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And, uh, and there was a point where after G-Unit, you kind of went back to the Cash Money group, right? Well, at a point of time, I, um, no, I never went back to Cash Money. Uh, I went to Rockin' with Juvenile. Okay. Yeah, see, mm -hmm. Juvenile had had started his own uh, his own label, which was UTP, and I rocked with him and was a part of that. <clears throat> but I never got to sign a contract, even in that situation. We put out a project that was a uh, that, that that did pretty well back then, and uh, you know, from there, uh, you know, he had we we kind of had a situation where I was actually with Juvenile when I met Fifty Cent. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? And 50 was in, in New York. And we, we had a, a bus that we traveled on with the studio and all of that stuff when I was with Juvenile. And Juvenile was a workaholic, you know what I mean? And when we got up there, rest in peace, but our bus driver, that same bus driver oh, that you wow. were talking about, he passed away. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he was one of Baby's real good friends mm. too. Rest in peace to CeeLo. And, um, you know, I was actually with Juvie when I met 50. We was in New York. A bus driver had connections with an individual that, that, that by the name of Shaw Money uh, that, that rocked with 50. And 50 was big on the mixtape scene and stuff like that. He came by the bus. They were actually doing the record. I was in the front playing records for Banks and Yayo. And uh, that was the Bloodhound. The Bloodhound was the first record that, that actually introduced me to G Unit, and actually, that was a record that I had already for myself. The world yeah. doesn't know this, so y'all getting exclusive on the Wild Ride. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, that that Bloodhound record was actually my record. Right, and, and it's a uh, banger. I was playing that record in the front of the bus, and I think it caught Fifty's attention. He was like, "Well, uh, his Banks heard it, and then he brought it back." Banks brought, brought took it back to Fifty, and he was like, "Yo," and then Fifty heard the record, and he really didn't give me a reaction like he was going take the record and put it on his album. He was kind of like, yeah, that's that's it. And uh, after my separation came with Juvenile is when uh, Shaw Money reached out and was like, yo, bro, what you doing? I'm like, man, I'm I'm just here right now, man. He was like, well, look, 50 wants this record on this. I'm like, what? So I never had been, a, you know, officially ever paid for a record like that. And, and uh, actually lined me up, paid me good. He got the record and kept kept uh, my second verse. And he put his two verses onto the record. And that's, that, that started it. You know, once they seen I was a free agent, um, offered me a contract and hey man, I took it and never looked back, you know. Uh, when, when, when somebody like 50 offers to buy your album or, or you know, song. buy that song, are you like, fuck yeah, and in the back of your head, you're like, okay, dude, how do I protect myself? Or, or are you just like, get this shit out there? I was a little bit of all of the above. Well, at the point, you, you had never sold any music. I have never so sold any music, so I didn't really know how it worked. So I even, and see, that's that, a lot of things that I've experienced, you know, even now going through, was based off of me just not knowing and making those decisions for myself. And at those times, I, I didn't have a lot of individuals around me that were uh, yeah. actually in the game that could even give me the knowledge. So I had to get out here and take the bumps and bruises for myself mm -hmm. from making mistakes, from signing this or not asking about this. And uh, in, the, in, the, in the long run, it, it started, to, started to affect me because of the, the moves and the decisions that I made you know, in the beginning. But I was excited from the beginning of, you know, he wants my record, you know for what I'm sure, saying? And then sure. it's like, yeah. he's with M and Dre. And then what really done it was when they was like, yo, M is crazy about the record. I'm like, what? <laughs> M knows me? 
<laughs> like what? Yeah. Like him? Yeah, he mixed the record. Shaw Money was like, yeah, he's mixing. Eminem actually mixed Bloodhound. So I really was through the roof then. I'm like, you know, Jesus Christ. And uh, I remember going to uh, Juvenile's manager at the time. And uh, and uh, his name is Ron, Ron Bird. And uh, reaching out to him like, yo, I need help, bro. I, you know, I don't really know what to do. So he acted as a manager and I became, he became my manager, Juvenile's manager. Uh, at that time, he became, you know, who I looked to actually help me with this contract and everything like that. But it, did, it didn't go through with me being able to keep Ron. We, we remain great friends even now, but it didn't go, go through that way being that, uh, you know, 50 had like an umbrella kind of set up already of, of the individuals uh, within the company. And then it was more one of those things where it was like, uh, you can come in up under this umbrella or we're not really accepting mm -hmm. the outside right. type of thing. So you had to be with Shaw Money. Yeah, I had to make Shaw Money, but basically Shaw Money was the manager of all of us at that time, like uh, me, Banks, Yayo, for sure. You know what I'm saying? He, I, I, he never managed game, uh, but yeah, I came in under the umbrella. They had the manager, the lawyers already there and everything in place. So it was like, I had to have that rough conversation <clears throat> with Ron, like, yo, you know, I'm gonna take this chance and this risk on my own. And I didn't have a blanket or nobody of knowledge of, of that. I just went straight in up under, up under that um, umbrella. And, um, and then the umbrella goes away. You're supposed to get out from under the umbrella. And that's where the problems came. That's when the problems came, you know. Um, like I say, man, me and <clears throat> I've went through all those phases where I've 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 went back and forth with Fifty and things like that about things that I felt he done to me or or, or, or could have helped do do for me. All of those things. I'm in a place now where I don't have nothing negative to say about a Fifty Cent, other than you know. We had some great times. I appreciate the opportunity that you gave me. I'm forever grateful for it. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm my best is yet to come. You know what I'm saying? I, I've technically released two albums solo wise, but they're all they're, they're both you know you know over platinum. You dig what I'm saying? Outside outside of the work that I did actually with G Unit as a group. All our records, we sold millions and millions of records. So I'm just in a place now where it's so much more to my artistry than even just rap. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a writer, I'm an artist, so I can actually create music for anything and anybody. So I found myself now in different genres of music and rocking with different artists. I mean, I'm from Nashville, so of course I've got a few country rec records and stuff just coming through and, and, and stuff like that. And uh, I'm real close with Yellow Wolf and uh, Three Six Mafia. Yeah. We got a project that's about to drop uh, this year. That's just you and DJ Paul? Yeah, DJ Paul produced the entire, entire record, but we got a few features, big name features on the record. Cool, man. And um, <clears throat> man, just staying at it. So your, your two albums are Straight Out of Cashville and Buck the World. Buck the World, yep. And uh, that was with G Unit, but my mixtape catalog is pretty good. Good. Now, when you're working under Fifty and G Unit, do you have a lot of creative control, or do you really have to like run everything by Fifty before you uh, go ahead and greenlight everything? I'm gonna be honest. I'm such a workaholic that he 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 would give me me. I would say like a lot of creative control, not only for my own projects, but for the actual group too, because um, the G Unit album, Beg For Mercy, 50 was, you know, able to, uh, you know, show up for that record when he was able to, because, you know, he had Get Rich or Die Trying that was so big. And then, you know, here he is putting out a record with us. So the creative control was kind of left left mm -hmm. in between me and Banks at that time. You know what I'm saying? So uh, he would come in and we would have certain records that we may have and 50 would just jump on those records or we would, uh, you know, get chances where we vibe together and stuff like that. Or I would just have records and be like, yo, I got this, what y'all think? 
they'll jump on the record and stuff like that. So creative control, 50 pretty much would let you, you know, have that control on, on what you what you choose to do with your own project. But his opinion, he got the last word totally. over, over, over yeah. Every, yeah, yeah. everything, though, you know. Whose idea was uh, G-Unit South? That was me. That was you? Yeah, from this very day. You know, uh, it was a situation where we were becoming so big and so fast, and I was the only Southern artist within the group. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, let me start to kind of bring more Southern artists in my mind to the table and create my own label. So when I ran it by him, he, he green-lighted it. You know, he was like, yo, that's, that's, that's perfect. So I started to brand G Unit South as much as possible in hopes of being able to go get uh, a distribution situ uh, situation uh, of my own to be able to bring more art artists to the table, not just Southern artists, but like kind of create another branch of the label mm -hmm. where, where we will be able to uh, have more artists to be able to sign. So G Unit South turned into Cashville. Cashville, pretty much, pretty much. G Unit South was like, was everything that I was focusing on. And then once once everything kind of started going south uh, from that, I, I, start, I had to keep it going. So Cashville Records, which is what I started to uh, brand and, and, and bring to the table at that time. And that's where I'm at now. You know, the difference between me and Young Buck is that I only have one artist on my label. <laughs> And it's important to me that I keep her happy, which is why I use Blue Chew tablets, baby. Honey, how much do you love it when I show you my blue tongue? Oh, I genuinely get so excited. I love it. Yeah, she screams with joy because she knows it's going down. And I think it's going down tonight. Yeah, it is. Time to wrap it up. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> before I get my blue chew going on with with my lady Lux. Let me tell you how you can get an entire month's supply of these phenomenal blue chew tablets completely for free. And if you don't know what they're about, they've got the same active ingredient as both Viagra and Cialis, except they're delicious, they're chewable, and they're only a fraction of the price. So to get your month's supply, you go to bluechew.com and use the promo code Stevo. You consult with the medical provider right there on the website, take care of your prescription, and then boom, an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets is on its way to you absolutely for free. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. And if you're wondering if it's gonna be a good time, let me assure you, I have a really good time every time. So one more time, go to bluechew.com and use the promo code Stevo to get an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets completely for free. All you pay is five bucks for shipping. Now, let's get back to it. You know, I'm, I'm in, a, I'm in a, a process of being a free agent. So going into 2024, I'm basically going into this, this year as a free agent, uh, not just so quick to just run and jump in another deal with, 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 uh, with, uh, any old label any old label like that i'm just you know i've i've been i've been independently pushing for a while now and i've i've been blessed to make a few dollars and in, in, in from independently pushing and just trying to really really regroup and rebrand myself because i've been through a lot of different things in regards to uh just trying to get out of my contract you know i've been through the bankruptcy situations and stuff like that and People have never left my side based on, I think, the talent that I bring to the table. And for a while, I wasn't able to kind of drop no music because, you know, it got to a point where I put something out and 50 was ceasing, desisting, cease and desisting my music and stuff like that. So all of those things stopped, you know what I'm saying? And uh, like I say, man, I'm, I'm in a place now where I'm <coughs> able to do what I want. It's like a breath of fresh air, like, Finally, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like <clears throat> all the stuff with 50, uh, you know, declaring the bankruptcy, like the yeah. s selling the music. Yeah. That that feels to me a little bit like 
Dre leaving Death Row Records and say, hey, just have it. I'll start over. Hey, that's exactly what I did. You know, honestly, it got to a point where it was like, um, you know, uh, with me filing my bankruptcy, of course made G-Unit's contract become a part of my, my bankruptcy because uh, in the beginning, he uh, filed, a, I think, a $250,000 claim, but this was three years ago, and he, I knew it was a lot of bogus. I didn't know why he was making that claim, but he never was, he never provided anything in regards to the claim. You know, with that kind of money, you're gonna have some kind of track record or bank yeah, it's documentation. or documentations or anything. So this was three years ago, and uh, he, I don't know why he made that claim, but what's so interesting is before I got here, that's why I was a little bit late. I'm actually in the process of just now getting to the dischargement of my bankruptcy, and they made a claim probably like five hours ago for the same $250,000. I'm like, what? Are you serious? Even the attorneys is like, this is about to be wrapped up. You know, you had three years. You passed over two or three deadlines. Y'all mm -hmm. haven't said nothing. So I think a lot of it is just, I don't know what I did to do to make him actually want to see me not feed my children and stuff like that. I, I, I don't, I, I never, I never had, I, don't, I just don't know what, what, 50 is his own, his own, his own, you know, person and stuff like that. But I would, I would never wish Dale for <clears throat> want to not see him be able to feed his family. And yeah, we had our misunderstandings. I don't even call them beeps and stuff like that. But yeah, we had our misunderstandings, but to uh, to do some of the things that he's done and attempt to try to discredit my name, discredit me as a person, to damage my character out here, and uh, you know, put out all these false narratives of different things in regards to certain craziness that I've went through. It's just like, You rich, my man. You still doing your thing. I want. I love your. I love your TV show power. You know what I mean. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, bro, we was once brothers. Y'all, you know, I've always looked at you as big, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I made mistakes too, but I've never did anything to try to take food out of your 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 mouth or stop you from eating. So it's just like, see how aggressive he is towards me. It makes me feel like, damn, is you trying to gyro me too? You Man, think? Like, is it true that uh, the the fifty stepped up and paid your taxes? Like, in my first, this is my second time having to go through this. But in the first time I dealt with it, he did, uh, he did help me. I, I, he didn't actually, fifty never paid nothing that I didn't have to pay back. Mm -hmm. So even though he might have, yeah, he did help. I still had to give him that money back. So what he did do, I didn't have. Right. And when I did start to have, he made sure he got his back. So, right. so the, the But that's still helpful. That's still like very it, helpful. It, it, Cause if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have known what to do. Right. You know, like I said, I didn't have a lot of knowledge of this shit. So once I made a few dollars, my first time having to deal with bankruptcy was like, okay, I mean, I'm I'm a full fledged celebrity. My mother still lived down the street in the projects. She's got to a point where she didn't want to leave, but now you got the whole neighborhood dropping music off on the porch and stuff <laughs> like that. Mm -hmm. I'm all over TV. So once I made a few dollars, bro, my living circumstances was so crazy. And of course, I might have added on a little bit more extra, but <laughs> the first thing I did was, you know, bought my mom's a house, <clears throat> bought myself a house, and, 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 I bought everything I was supposed to and I shouldn't bought. You dig? Yeah. So yeah. here it is, come the end of the year, I'm damn near broke and relying on other money coming in that, to, to get me back together. And then all of a sudden they hit me with this tax thing that was like, what is this? Right. So mm -hmm. I didn't have I didn't have knowledge of even what, it's the first time I ever filed taxes in my life and even then I didn't file them myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was his business uh, accountant. My it was a conflict of interest in the beginning. My business accountant was his business account. Right, that umbrella. That umbrella that I walked into started to be realizing that it was a, it was a different problem. 
my 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 lawyer at the time was hired through his lawyer. Right. You understand? So all of us, you know what I mean? So a lot of those things that it wasn't like nobody sitting down and telling me, you know, what was going on. Of course, you know, uh, I did make the decisions, but, you know, I looked at it as if, like, this is my opportunity of a lifetime, and I know what I could do and would do and did do with the opportunity, you know. So that was more my focus more than the business. Now, looking back on things, if I was to do anything over, it was I would I would I would have had more knowledge and, and yeah. took more time in starting to learn the business. Like I've had no choice to now. You I did. mean, you were still pretty young during the yeah the whole G Unit days, right? Like yeah, early twenty, early twenties. Yeah, 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 early early twenties. Uh, I came in and in, in, uh, into G Unit in two thousand and two, two thousand and three. I'm 42 now, so you can y'all can do the math out there yeah. right now. So out of all out of all the beef that you inherited, <laughs> would you say like the IRS are the biggest gangsters of them all? <laughs> I will say they ain't to be fucked with. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know and uh, you know, like I say, man, my experience is uh, just just going through stuff like that. I've, I've, I've you know how your mom says this old saying, uh, a hard head make a soft ass, you know. <laughs> I, hard head definitely does. It's like a lot of things that I, I did do, I, I I knew I shouldn't have been doing, but instead I, I had a hard head and did it anyway. Probably kind of like your crazy ass too sure. at that time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man, it was just one of those things where um, I had to learn the hard way, man. For mm -hmm. real, for real. And the IRS is one of the best teachers you can have. Uh, yeah, because there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it, and that was one of the, I experienced some of the most heart, heartful, hurting things that stuck to my life in regards of dealing with uh, bankruptcy and stuff like that. My first time after, you know, going through all those things, I ended up falling out with 50 during my first bankruptcy, and he pulled everything away from me, and I couldn't make no money nowhere, so I ended up getting resorted into uh, my, all my stuff being auctioned off. So I woke up one morning and, and, and I'm in this mansion and living my life. And then I got the, the IRS, IRS at raid. my door, the raid with the, and, and they're coming in and taking all my kids' stuff and and, and so all crazy. of those different things. And in and, and that and, and that process, uh, I had a tour manager at the time had left a weapon in my yeah. home. You understand? He and left they waited a gun. eight months. And they waited eight months, bro, to indict me on that, on the weapon that I never knew that was there, never touched, no fingerprints. But the fact that the house was in my name, yeah. it sent me to federal prison. You know, and federal, federal prison, man. So what was First your longest charge been? in my life? Uh, I eight. did like eighteen months over there with dealing with that. With that, I went to Yazoo, Yazoo uh, Federal Penitentiary. I started. My first time going to the penitentiary was the low. Uh, and, uh, you know, that was a real experience for the me. The low, you mean low security? Low security was my first. I ended up going back, you know. But I, I couldn't understand, uh, you know, I, I mean, I know numerous people that was caught numerous gun charges, but for some reason, the DA at that time was so, you know, adamant about, uh, sending me to prison and stuff like that bro like he was under the 50 umbrella <laughs> i don't know i'm just kidding but yeah man like at the say that you know they found a weapon in the house I, I didn't have no knowledge of it they found a, a bullet i used to have security and stuff like that at my crib and stuff they found one bullet that didn't even match the gun that they found and charged me with a felon in possession yeah. of do a you, fire uh, uh ammunition yep. do, you, do you think the reason they went so hard on you is because i feel like back then the da really wanted to like make rappers an example yeah uh yeah. Of, like when they fuck up the da where because that's uh, it was in here it was in tennessee the d the, the da the DA actually that prosecuted me in that situation the first time was one of the hard, well, he has a very, very uh, hard reputation uh, in, in, in throughout my city for actually, you know, not playing and, and really prosecuting individuals. So, you know, I had no knowledge of who he was until I started to deal with that case in itself. And, uh, you know, 
honestly, he he kind of almost scared me into to 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 playing out. You know, I didn't know what he would do. He, you know, he was one of those DAs, and mm -hmm. I don't know if he still is a DA or what, but he's one of those DAs. It's like you know. Uh, He's gonna get a conviction one way or another if he's on your if he's on your ass yeah. type of thing. Yeah. So it was like I had a lot of individuals that I had encountered with, whether it was just meeting, not knowing what they got going on, speaking what up, what up, and he might have seen me on a picture where they watching these individuals and thinking that I'm involved with these folks, but it's like, man, I'm a celebrity. I meet a lot of people, but I don't know what the hell they got going on. And uh he took it as if like Yes, you do. So his whole thing was about questioning me about, you know, certain things, dealing with certain individuals that I couldn't provide no no answers. I didn't even choose to sit down to talk to you. Why am I even going to talk to you about something that I don't know? And once once he seen that I, I wouldn't cooperate in, in, in his method of doing whatever he was trying to do, he told me straight up or told my attorney, you know what I'm saying, that he was going he was going to send me to prison. And he did. And I think I got caught up as well in the middle of uh, a lot of the politics in my city because uh, at that time, you know, uh, my attorney is now the head of the DA mm. now. So I think a lot of politics and stuff came in, in regards to, I'm a big fish in a small pond. So that prosecution of me was like, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe, I, and this is just me wishful thinking. I think it was like, I'll give you him if you give me this type of thing. Like, I don't know, man, but hey, I, I got past that, went through that sentence, got out. It was eight months for the gun? No, 18 months. 18 months for the gun. In federal prison, yeah. What's the difference between federal prison and state prison? Like, is there a difference in- I don't know, I hope I don't find out. I'm okay. actually fighting a situation <laughs> now in the state. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and I'm totally innocent in that situation. Like I say, um, <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? They're coming out ready, bro. I'm like, what's going on, bro? Like, what are they doing? Well, we are in the hood. Yeah. Uh, like, but see, ain't that crazy, though, for me to say that? And then you're yeah. But no, honestly, like... Um, He's like, you guys wearing a wire? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I got out from completing that 18-month sentence, man. And uh, from there, I, uh, I started... I made a decision that while I was in prison to, to actually go back to G-Unit. You know, in, in my mind, I felt like, because I, I was away from G-Unit when I went to prison at that time. Like I say, that, that played a part of me going to prison because 50 pulled out, I didn't have nothing. You know what I'm saying? So it was one of those things that once I I was in prison, I'm, and it's not like I, I, I went to prison and was in no uh, PC, protective custody yeah. or none of that. I'm actually walking the yard with, you know, you guys have got 15, 20 years, been there 20, 30 years, and all of this, all, everything that comes along with prison, I, I experienced it. I didn't experience it from an end of, uh, uh, you know, being yeah, placed. Celebrity. Yeah, I'm, I'm a celebrity, and individuals saying, yo, can you sign this for my kids, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. So um, my prison experience was, was 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 real. You know, I, I've, I had a chance to meet a lot of great dudes that was from all over the world. And that's one of the biggest differences I would say within the state and the federal is that, you know, you meet all these different people from everywhere and the state is kind of mostly locally wherever you're from. Mm -hmm. And um, they'll move you around wherever. You might be in Mississippi for a year, California the next year, you know, it just depends, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, you know, how they choose to move you around. And, did that time, got out, and uh, in my mind, I, I always want, I wanted to, you know, finish what I started, man, with G-Unit. I didn't see myself not ever not being a part of G-Unit. I didn't want things to be the way it is now. You know what I'm saying? And even in prison, that my whole thing was like, bro, whatever I need to do to fix this, bro, to get back with my brothers, bro, I'm going to do it. And uh, shout out to Coach PR and Who Kid, man. They, yeah. they, they started really pushing for the, the G-Unit reunion. And uh, I was out, and 
they made it happen, bro. Both of them dudes, man. I love them dudes, man. They 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 made it happen. They pressed the issue enough with 50, I think, in regards to uh, you know, paying it attention, and he started to pay it attention. And I found myself back in New York uh, on the Summer Jam stage. I forget what year that was. I think it was 2016. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And uh, when the reunion happened, did you have any uh, expectations? Like, oh man, this is gonna be like. It, this is gonna explode just like it did in the early 2000s. This is I a did. fresh start. I did, I did. And to this very day, it still could. You know, we are we are, we are a loved group around the world. You know what I'm saying? And what we've done and created with hip hop will last forever. Mm -hmm. So it, my expectations was basically picking up where it left off at. Because even though, you know, things were, you, you got a lot of different artists that were starting to, you know, blow. We we had we we are what we are now, legends. We we've already sta stamped ourselves as legends in the game. So it was like that acceptance from the world of wanting to see us together is even still there to this very day. For sure. And um, that was like the beginning of getting everything right in my mind. It's like yeah. So uh, the bond started to become a little bit stronger and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause we've been through this and been through that. So we started, <clears throat> started working, man. We released two projects. I think the beauty of independence is one that we released once, once we, re, you know, reunited. And uh, it was another project. I can't think of That was of a mixtape? Yeah. Well, he actually sold those tapes. So I can't really call them mixtapes. Okay. I, I, I gotta call them, EPs, All right. because they were two two EPs that we dropped, and um, you know everything was rocking, man, and, and moving. And wasn't it that uh, you guys got back together for the summer jam, put out the EPs, mm -hmm. and then there was like an interview that you said that you didn't get any royalty checks, that's, and then that just blew everything up. It blew over. everything up. That's that's why I mean, it's, that's that's why we're here. That's the real reason. Yeah. It was never over uh, this false stuff that they put out with the trans and all of this crazy stuff that this that this dude <laughs> sits around and does. But it was based on the fact of me doing that interview and speaking on the fact of saying I've never received a royalty check. But it wasn't a lie. It wasn't a lie. I didn't I didn't know I was doing the wrong thing by 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 expressing that. You know what I'm saying? I, I was actually giving it and saying that based on the, to, to kind of like let the world know, like, look at all I got. And I ain't never seen a royalty check. Yeah. So I okay. wasn't saying like 50 wasn't paying us or allowing us to get money. I was just being truthful. Like, I ain't never received a royalty check. Well, that, that was a lyric on Get Rich or Die Trying. Yeah, yeah. So it's one of those things though where, you know, at that time, we were just now getting back, and I'll never forget Shaw Money reaching out to me and was like, yo, 50's really tripping over that, man. And I'm like, damn, bro, what I need to do? Like, I didn't mean it that way. And uh, he was like, yo, bro, I'm going to try to talk to him. And, you know, I started to reach out to him. And, and uh, was that, <clears throat> was Shaw Money still with yep, 50 then? Yep, yep, yep. Shaw was still with 50. Um, you know, Shaw was having his issues. I, I, I think him and Fifty wasn't on the same page as they was. They were having their own personal issues, which I couldn't speak on because, I, truthfully, I don't know exactly what their issues was. But they were they wasn't on the same page, and uh, Fifty kind of left me, like, like kind of pushed me and Shaw to the, to the side. So we kind of was rocking together in regards to anything um especially involved i was uh on my second project coming out of my second project at that time when all of this started to happen and shaman came running in and said yo like buck cleared 10 million from g unit royalties exactly and then that sparked everything because shaw money tried to throw this at the time he put the number out there like bucks made over 10 million in his career and I'm like, I made some millions, but not that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it was kind of like, 
He was just, I, I think overall, man, and shout out to Shout Money, man, he was just trying to keep us together, bro. Uh, yeah. You know, and. Uh, now, do you know if, if Banks and Yayo were, were going, were having the same issues as you, like not getting any royalties? Um, If they were, I don't know their business, but if they were, they've never spoken out or spoken on anything. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know, I don't really know the relationship that they have. I mean, have. certainly 50 has stated that every member of the G unit cleared 10 million. Yeah, from, that's from, not true. I, I, do you still have relationships with Banks and Yaya? Uh, I have no problem with neither one of them. I haven't spoken to them in years. You know, I don't know why. Uh, I've reached out to Banks, you know, because I, I don't even know his situation with G unit like that. I know he's uh, been, been releasing some, some pretty dope projects and stuff like that on his home. And, uh, I've reached out, but you know, don't nobody, don't nobody reach back. You dig? I've reached out. I've spoken to Yayo maybe once, uh, I, you know, or at least reached out. I know he stays in in touch with my right hand guy Charlie P, uh, and and they may speak here and there, but uh, you know, everybody has a different kind of loyalty in this, you know, and his loyalty to Fifty is um, a little deeper. Than, than what mine was, I think, in a sense, they growed up together. Mm -hmm. All of them did, you know, except for me. I'm I'm all I'm almost like the outcast of the group that, that came in, but also one of the most talented in the group as well. I will stand on that. And I've done a lot in regards of creating the music and making the music for us as a group. And, uh, you know, it shows, you know, my I mean absence. I, I can say for a fact that out of G Unit shit, that your verses are my favorite. And yeah. I appreciate that, man. For real, man. Yeah. I hear that a lot, though, and and it, and it's a good feeling. But I've always been a fan of of of, of Banks, Yayo, and Fifty, and even the game. You know what I'm saying? To this very day, I ain't got no ill will with nobody, man. I'm I'm out here trying to, you know, keep giving the world good music, feed my family. And move forward with with uh, with life in itself. You know, I'm not in a place of going back and forth. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I've always been a real life individual, so I'ma stay that way. And if it's if it's real issues or it's really that, then at some point in time we'll cross paths and see what it is. But for me to jump on podcasts or interviews and try to promote a beef or having an issue with those dudes, no matter what they may say, feel, or think about me. It's no problem with me. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like it doesn't get to me no more, man. I used to, I used to wear my heart on my sleeve dealing with this game, man, and uh, uh, very emotional. I'm a Pisces, and, and I allow my emotions to, 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 to overshadow a lot of things at times where maybe I could have just, you know. You're an artist. Sh shut the fuck up, but I did. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, man. I mean, G Unit would definitely not be the same without Young Buck because G Unit yeah. was very New York, and you yeah. added that Southern flair to it that just made it like yeah. so much more hard. It is, man. And I learned a lot by being surrounded by just like <coughs> East Coast artists. They actually got me on my game lyrically wise. You know what I'm saying? Because you got an individual like Banks. I've always felt like Banks is one of the best rappers in the game, period. Punchline wise, bar for mm -hmm. bar, you better have your shit together. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And to this very day, like Banks is dope. Uh, Yayo, Yayo has his elements in what he brings. He has more energy than probably anybody in this goddamn room. You understand? Uh, like Yayo has uh, uh, his own style. He's not sounding like nobody or trying to be nobody. And I've always admired that about Yayo. It's like, you know, this is this is what I bring to the table and stuff like that. And 50 showed me that even though I'm from the South and stuff like that, I'm in an element of dealing with artists that, he, 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 he helped mold my sound. And where I can't, even though I come from the South, I can't just put myself as a Southern artist because I'm almost like a mixture of the East, West, and the South. Mm -hmm. And that's what's Young Buck. You know what I'm saying? I got a southern tone, but at the same time, I got a, you know, bi-coastal flow. Let me say that. You dig what I'm saying? I'm, every coast kind of plays a part 
into to what I do. I spent a lot of time on the West Coast. I got a lot of family out there, uh, you know, before G Unit and doing G Unit. So that plays a part in, in into me as an artist as well. So just by being a a Rolling Stone and actually, you know. Uh, really living in LA, really living in New York, you know, really living in Cashville, you know, and things like that. It, it has made a mixture of me pulling from everywhere. You yeah. Know? How, how much uh, time do you spend doing shows these days? I mean, shit, man, they they paid all the bills for 2023. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, I mean, shows is is like. That's what that's my favorite thing. My favorite thing in in music is being able to get in front of the people that actually appreciate and love what you create. So, uh, I man, I, I did a lot of shows in 2023 and look to do even more in 2024. There it is. I feel like 2024 is like my like my job, my rent, Kobe year. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? It's like my Kobe year. Like I don't I don't feel like I'm gonna ever get old or something like. I'm forever young type. You don't there feel like is. that, Steve? I, I can feel my age creeping up on me. <laughs> well, my knees and shit hurt every now and then. <laughs> but You're in shape, dude. Yeah, but I mean, I, I just, I just, uh, I don't want to get old. Let me say that. Yeah. I don't want to get old. So I just stay like, uh, just stay as active as I can. I love music, so I'm working all day, every day. I got a session even when I leave here. Uh, with Ben Play, which is a big producer that started uh, out with me in the beginning and now is creating tracks for everybody in the game right now. And he's home for the for the holidays, so I'm finna rock with him. Uh, I'm gonna pull up on Yellow Wolf real yeah. quick. He's got a brand new mansion. And he's like, yo, bro, you can't, you're gonna shit a brick when you see my new shit. So, you know, I got good motivation around me, Jelly Roll. And everything he's doing and, and done for the city and still continues to do. Yeah. His motivation to watch these individuals, uh, you know, such such as Jelly Roll, come from where I come from. And he's made his transition into the music and, and, and yeah, watching him blowing up, blowing up as big as he is and mm -hmm. actually keeping it 100 and, and staying, you know, uh, staying down for the city of Cashville and just... You know that that's just motivation to watch all these young artists to uh, to to go do their thing. So we I, saw I, something that um, that said before there was Young Buck, there was a, a, this thing called the Curse of Nashville, and you true. were the artist that really broke the curse. Yeah, 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 by far, it was a bad curse of Nashville. Like it was one of those situations where I actually had to get up out of Nashville to actually go mm -hmm. get some ground and get some movement around me. Yeah. But it also made me realize that I had to take the end and just move it to the side and put the C there to name the city Cashville. Mm -hmm. Because what I found to realize was I might be in a room full of artists that was one from LA, one from New York, one's from Atlanta. And just because of where they're from, they get the first look. I'm better than all these guys. But just because they represent a, a bigger city or, or, or a bigger thing. So I started to say, it seemed like every time I say I'm from Nashville, it was like, oh, shit, man. This is going to be some country bullshit. Or, you know, <laughs> they, they kind of looked at it as if it was, you know, not just as hood street and everything else. It's in any, any other ghetto. There's no ghetto bigger than my Your ghetto ain't no harder than mine. So it was like. Those were the aura and eras of artists that I was dealing with at those times. So then I, I, I started saying, you know what? Damn, man, my city is, is just like L.A. My city is just like these projects in Queens and all of these things. So how can I uh, respect the heritage of Nashville, which is country music, and also let them see that there's a different side to Nashville as well? And that's when I came up with Cashville. So it turned from me saying I'm from Nashville to Cashville. And then that was more intriguing, especially in the hip hop world, mm -hmm. to hear that. And a lot of people <coughs> thought Cashville was an actual fucking place. It, it, they didn't know it was Nashville. 
So I'm saying I'm from Cashville, motherfuckers like, bro, I gotta go there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they get money out there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not knowing that it's actually Nashville, bro. You wow. know what I'm saying? I mean, so, yeah. They're, they're, they're printing money in Nashville, man. Yeah, it's, bro. Uh, it's, 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 this it's, is actually, you know, a lot of artists get, get a lot of fame and a lot of money and then they move from home. I've watched a lot of artists, uh, Boosie says, uh, I think on an interview I had seen him, he was like, you know, uh, you get, a lot of artists get, you know, this money and fame and they never leave their home and then that's when tragedy or things like that starts to happen and a lot of times it does. But in my city, I end up coming from a city that's on the rise. Yeah. So for yeah. me to leave my city, I feel like, no, I have to dive in and be a part of the rise. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. there's so much opportunity out here. I think we're the number two growing the city in the world type thing. You know, you look yeah. up and it's, it's so many people here. Like, like it's crazy. Like, everybody's yeah. running to Nashville to yeah. live and Probably stuff Miami like that. Miami number one, Nashville number two. Miami, yeah, Miami? Man. Huh? Like Florida, Miami. somewhere thought, in Florida. I thought Austin was number I think Austin. Yeah. Yeah. Nashville. It's crazy, bro, like out here, man. Everywhere you look. If we walk outside now, and, you, and I don't know if y'all know this, but if you look up in the air and turn into 360, you'll see cranes in yeah. every motion that you go. So the skyline that, that we look at here in Nashville, I remember it was this big. Now it's becoming this big on the way to becoming this big. Yeah. So I just want to, I want to actually, you know, uh, I've learned business a lot more than then. So I'm, I'm in the process of trying to, uh, open up a few different businesses and things like that around here just to uh, not only honor my career and what I've done for my city, but to uh, let, you know, out-of-towners and stuff like that get an experience of buck, you dig? So my thing yeah. is trying to open up a, I want to do a bar, a pretty dope bar, something like that. I mean, we got a lot of country music artists that has bars and stuff downtown on Broadway, but there's no... There's no, uh, let me say this, there's no bar pretty much in Broadway. Well, they do have a few of them. I don't want to take away from the city, but where there's like a, either either it's country music or, or, it's, or it's hip hop, I want to kind of create a spot where it's a little like a mesh of everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're going to play some rock. We're going to play some pop. We're going to play some rap. We're going to some... You know, and that's what I feel like our city is, is in need of in the Broadway area. Because if you go down there, you'll see Jason Aldean. Uh, shout out to him. Shout out to my guy, Kid Rock. I, me right. and Kid Rock hang out. He's a good dude. I've been, <laughs> I've, 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 well, that's a wild boy, y'all. So shout out to Kid Rock, bro. He's a, He showed a lot of love to me and stuff like that. And he's got a, a, a dope bar and stuff like that downtown as well. But... I just like, like I say, I love seeing everybody together. So I want to just kind of have a spot where it's just a mesh of everything, and everybody has a has an experience of Cashville as a whole, versus then separating it where, oh, just because it's country music, you got to listen to it here, or they only yeah. do country music. I just want to do everything. We yeah. play everything. We all come together and just party because this is a fucking city that don't sleep pretty much. Hell yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, with 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 touring, like like what, what what's your hub for 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 people to f get in on all your shit? Oh man, uh, of course you can follow me on all the the social media networks. My my Instagram page is Buckshots with a Z. Um, my Twitter is Young Buck. Uh, my Facebook is Young Buck and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, you and you and me have followed each other on Twitter for like, ever, like forever. Yeah, <laughs> so forever. Now I gotta follow you on the Instagram. Yeah, me too, man. <laughs> yeah, likewise. But uh, yeah, man. I, and then uh, and uh, my booking info and uh, booking information is is in the bio of all my social networks. So all right. It's not really hard to get at me. You know what I'm saying? If you need me to pull up and come hug the babies or or, or perform. <laughs> Just let me know, you know what I mean? I ain't gonna charge you too much, you know? I'll come to the cookouts and the, the weddings. You know, like I say, I, 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 just, I just love the fact of being able to touch people through music, because that's where I come from. 
But one of my biggest focus this year is to to do as many films as possible. I really want to get off into the acting world. I think that it's 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 like gonna be like a new a new career or a new wave in a sense for me. Music, I'ma never stop doing music. Uh, a lot of my fans is excited just because I'm at this point where I'm actually about to start dropping music again. And uh, I got a lot, a lot of music. So I'm I'm looking for 2024 to be a very musical year for mm. Young Buck. You did. Love it. Love Good, it. man. Well, hell yeah, dude. Hey, man, listen, dude, bro. it's great to see cheers, you, Cheers, bro. Yeah. Liquid death, cheers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, man. Well, dude, everybody get on that IG, get on that Twitter. Yeah, get man. Get on... Get on that booking and, and get ready for that bar. Hey, man, listen, man, I'm working hard on it, man. Also, I want to let, uh, I've, 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 I'm, I'm big on food. So I do, a, for a minute, I really was doing a lot of cooking throughout the Instagram and showing people that, you know, I can turn into Chef B.R. Buck. And uh, <laughs> just showing off my Luke, my Luke. I, but I love to cook, so I'm also looking to uh, open up a restaurant and, uh do something different with what that. Kind of food? I, yeah, yeah, just, what, what oh, kind, what kind of yeah. food? Of course, Southern food, but I want to do some different, you know, just different things like, uh, you know, I might wake up and just come up with some shit like that, you know, um, but just kind of like a mixture of all kind of foods. Yeah. You know, Southern food, I ain't going to say the basis, but, you know, I want to have hibachi, Southern, like very seldom do you go to a restaurant where you can actually get anything you know what i'm saying right. like you can go get some pork chops and turnip greens and a, and, and a tomahawk or a filet mignon or you go over here and get a hibachi so and i may honestly i want to call it with your hungry ass <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> so it's just like if you're hungry we got whatever you want you know what i'm saying sushi but it's just like a restaurant where you go in, you know how you usually go into a steak restaurant, you go into a, a you know, a, yeah. a seafood restaurant, just a spot where it has everything in regards to food and just a vibe. Because I feel like life is kind of like based on vibes as well, you know, just to have a great atmosphere and just a good place for people to actually not only enjoy the food, but enjoy the music. Because everywhere I go, music got to go. So it's just one of those things where business-wise, when I'm thinking of business, I'm, I'm almost kind of adding the music in into whatever I choose yeah, to I do. Yeah, I think the restaurant and the bar could probably be the same thing. It'd be the same thing, you dig? Or at least we could have some of the same crazy-ass foods and shit I'll be coming up with, at least right. in the bar. You know, who knows, man, what the future holds, but I do know 2024 is my uh, my Kobe year. You know, right. so, get, so get used to me. <laughs> Again, you did. <laughs> Word. Hell yeah, man. Thank you, Buck. Darren. I appreciate you, bro. Yeah, Again, likewise, bro. Yeah, nice likewise. to meet you. There you have it, folks. This was the first podcast of the new year. And I want to wish everybody all of the good fortune and happiness in this new year. And I want you to wish that to Young Buck. If you can give him some love, my beautiful street team, that'll mean a lot. Um, and, uh, we should try to send this episode, maybe even in advance to some hip hop music outlets, try and get this episode some extra love because man, it was killer. Buck was just a, a humble, just great dude. And, uh, it, you know, not a lot of people go through tough times like that and come out as a, you know. Like that, I mean, dude, I loved it. I love you too. Thank you for sticking around to the very end and best wishes and lots of love in the new year. Yeah, dude.